Hello, everyone, and welcome. My name is Rachel Varga, board certified aesthetic nurse specialist. And in this episode on the Rachel Varga podcast, I have an incredible guest for you all today. I'm going to introduce you now to JJ Virgin, and we had the pleasure of meeting. And this is a woman on a mission. And she, I'll just tell you a little bit about her, but it doesn't even scratch the surface of who she is. And we're actually gonna be diving into what I uh, would like to believe is really more of her essence of what she is. So JJ is a triple board certified nutrition expert and fitness hall of famer. She's a passionate advocate of eating and exercising smarter. JJ and her team help people stay fired up and healthy as they age, which is perfect you know, looking good in the process so that they feel the best they can, even at age 40 plus. JJ is a prominent TV and media personality whose previous features include co-hosting of TLC's Freaky Eaters, two years as the on-camera nutritionist for weight loss challenges on Dr. Phil, and numerous appearances on PBS, Dr. Oz, and Rachel Ray, Access Hollywood, and The Today Show. She also speaks regularly and has shared the stage with notables, in, including Seth Godin, Lisa Nichols, Gary Vaynerchuk, Mark Hyman, Dan Butner, and Mary Morrissey, who Mary Morrissey has a very special place in my heart. JJ is the author of four New York Times best-selling books, The Virgin Diet, The Virgin Diet Cookbook, JJ Virgin Sugar Impact Diet, and JJ Virgin's Sugar Impact Diet Cookbook. Her latest book, Warrior Mom, Seven Secrets to Bold, Brave, Resilience, shows caregivers everywhere how to be strong, positive leaders to their families and communities while exploring the inspirational lessons JJ learned as she fought for her son's own very life. And this is actually something we're really gonna be diving into in this episode here. And so JJ Virgin, thank you so much for joining us today. But what you haven't included in your bio is the fact that you have this incredible ability to facilitate healers and bring everyone together. And I wish that you would include that in your bio because <laughs> that is a skill that not a lot of people can have. So welcome. Thank you. Good to be here. Yeah. So, so when, you, when you hear me introduce you, you know, you have all of these incredible accolades. What really got you started into the field of, of helping other healers get their message across? Why did you start to do that work? Because that's really how we came to meet. Yeah. And that's actually what I like to do the most. It makes me the happiest. I love creating extraordinary experiences where people can connect deeply and collaborate. And early on in my career, I was working one-on-one. -on -one. I was a personal trainer and a nutrition expert, and I loved the transformations I was seeing, but I was frustrated in the fact that I was like reaching so few people. And my big goal then, I was like, I want to help a million people. I want to mm -hmm. help a million people. I want to help a million people. And, you know, if you bl believe anything at all into the law of attraction, I'm completely like, it, it's everything's created twice. And I was so clear, I wanted to help a million people. The next thing I know, Rachel, I'm a regular on Dr. Phil. So it was like, check that off the list, right? <laughs> um, but I saw a couple things that were really interesting to me on Dr. Phil was that the people who were on TV were not necessarily the people who were the most skilled clinicians that mm -hmm. were doing the most amazing mm -hmm. things. And in fact, so many of the people I was meeting in the, out in the world who were doing incredible work were not known. They were like the best kept secret. Mm -hmm. And I decided once I'd helped a million people get healthy that I needed to help a billion people get healthy, but that wasn't going to be me. That the way that I could really help the most people out in the world was through helping more amazing practitioners get their message out, become known. And that's really what I've been obsessed with. And I think the easiest way to help others become known and get their message out is through collaboration. And so what I did was really, you know, I didn't realize how groundbreaking it was when I first started doing it because I just live collaboratively. Like I don't understand competition. To me, you compete with yourself to be the best version of yourself. But, you know, you support each other to 
be help them be their best version too. So I brought mm-hmm. a whole bunch of doctors and healthcare professionals and health experts and entrepreneurs together. And I remember at first when I did it, they're like, you want us to share our best practices with each other, our competition? And I'm like, yeah, you know, this will be great. Trust me. Like no one buys just one diet book. We'll all be great together. And it took a little convincing <laughs> at first. People were like, this woman's nuts. And I think the other funny thing was to, to create a, an experience where vegans and paleo enthusiasts and keto, <laughs> like they're all hanging out, eating together. And then you've got chiropractors hanging out with medical doctors, hanging out with personal trainers, and they're all hanging out together. And it was like unheard of that all these people who generally in the world were like poo-pooing each other, were all like finding out that they're much more alike than they are different. And that together we're so much stronger and we can help each other get those messages out in the world, just like you and I are doing right now. So that has really become my massive passion driving force in what I do. Mm -hmm. And I'm so grateful for the community of healers that you've really been able to hold the space for and cultivate. Because for me as a provider, when I have a question, I reach out to the community and I have tons of people getting back to me, offering insight into this, that, or the other thing. So it's it's just incredible how you really help to bring how we all work together in a really beautiful way. So what are you most proud of with the work that you've done, you know, New York times bestselling author (laughs) on some of the biggest media outlets. And then of course, with the, with the mindshare collaborative that I'm a part of with you, what are you most proud of? Um, Personally, I'm most proud of being a mom and having two awesome boys and now being married and having awesome bonus kids. Professionally, I'm most proud of the people who I've helped. And, you know, I've, I've just coached them and guided them. They took the action. They did the work. But I like love seeing what I love seeing the most is people who I've helped now helping other people achieve, too. You know, it's one thing to help someone become a New York Times bestselling author or get on TV, but it's a whole nother thing to see them now give everybody else a leg up. Um, Like examples would be Dr. Kellyanne, um, who I helped her with her New York Times campaigns. And now all of a sudden she's doing shows and she's bringing other people up and on. Same with Dr. Alan Christensen. Dr. Isabella Wentz. So those things make me beyond happy to see people who, who pay it forward, who are so generous, who are so kind, who don't like, you'll see sometimes, and I had a great mentor early on in life who said, remember your beginnings. Mm -hmm. And you see some people who become successful and they just, all of a sudden they're too good for everybody else. And I was talking to Dr. Mark Hyman about this and I go, you know, one of the things I love most about you, and he's just a, an amazing human being, like, you know, so kind, so generous and on the mission. And he's never let the success make him a jerk. Mm-hmm. You know, he still helps everybody. And that's what I really think is the most amazing is, is when people start to really be successful and they look back and go, who comes along with me? Let's all, you guys all come up to. Mm-hmm. I mean, Dave, our brother, Dave Asprey is another great example of that, right? Yeah. I actually just dropped off some bounty from our garden, from our home to theirs. And mm. of course he thanked me with lots of his bulletproof coffee. Yay. And, good trade. Good trade. <laughs> <laughs> and I happen to know that you and Dave and Lana are really good friends so they're actually who I went to, to really try and uncover, okay, JJ Virgin, just this, this powerhouse. When I first met you, I just saw you and you're just the statuesque goddess and just the, the, the power that you actually have to be able to facilitate what you're doing is quite remarkable. And like I said earlier, I think that would be really just quite, uh, it's quite impressive to actually add that into your bio. The fact that you are cultivating this team of healers to be leaders in our community and look at providing health and wellness to our clients, our patients, and our community and our families in a different way. So I, I really want to thank you for that. And, and how does that feel for you to hear that, you know, really, I think you are creating a new way 
of providing healthcare. Well, what's really interesting right now with us recording this right now, when we've been on lockdown, it's in the middle of the pandemic. And as that started to happen, I thought, oh my gosh, I'm so thankful that we've been teaching people how to share information online, how to have virtual businesses, how to be able to get products and programs to people if they can't come into their office. Because I started to read about these doctors who their practices were closed and they were, they were struggling. There was no way they could help their patients. But in our community, that hasn't been the case. Mm -hmm. And literally, I look at all this and I think, honestly, since this first thing started to happen, since the first word started to come out about the pandemic, um, I have not taken any time off. I've been working seven days a week. I've been working at night. You know? <laughs> I've been getting up early. I've been more obsessed than ever because I just feel like the zeitgeist has changed where people understand that your real wealth is health. Like we all, we are all in that community of like prevention and wellness. And, and sometimes you feel like everyone's like going la, 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 la. Right. right. But I feel like now they're listening. And mm -hmm. the other side of it is, you know, there were so many doctors and health experts that had, um, you know, physical practices that really were like, didn't want to learn online and, and almost looked down on it that are now going, oh. And so I just see, I always look at what's good about this. And, you know, there's a lot of scary and bad here, but the positive is, you know, we can start to shift people into understanding and realizing that they've got to look at prevention and we can help practitioners really realize that their role is a teacher. Their role as a teacher and a healer and however they can get that information out and inspire and motivate and help their patients take action steps and that a lot of that stuff can be done in leveraged ways online. So mm -hmm. it just inspires me to go further, faster. And, you know, um, two months ago, we all sat down as a team in Mindshare, I guess it was three months ago, actually. And I said, I want you to look at this and say, what if we have to do our entire business for the next two years online and we need to help everyone make that shift as quickly as possible? And what do we need to do to do that? And that's yeah. what we've been doing. <laughs> yeah. And because of your call to action for all of the healers in the community, that's why I was prompted to lead that 15 Health Experts Summit. It was a three hour live interview mm -hmm. where everybody in the community just rose to the occasion to share immune building health tips, right? How to keep happy and healthy homes. So you went through an experience with your dear son and you know he was in a traumatic car accident left for dead. It's, I, I just, I can't even imagine what that must have been like for you. And you were able to be there for your son because of the care that you give yourself, your high level of self-care. So self-care isn't a luxury, right? A byproduct <laughs> of self-care is being able to live your life fully in a beautiful and radiant way. But what was that like for you looking back on that? And how blessed were you that you had taken such good care of yourself and going through a difficult time? How did you maintain that? You know, it's been interesting as we've walked into this situation, um, I've been doing a lot of teaching on what I call immune strong, what you need to do to have an immune system that's able to handle all of this. And I feel like I'm uniquely qualified because I what I went through. And mm -hmm. so my son was out for a walk and got hit by a car when he was 16 and left for dead in the street and literally like airlifted to the local hospital. They told us to let him die because he had a torn aorta that was going to rupture in the next 24 hours. And um, they said if they didn't repair it, you know, if it didn't get repaired, he was going to die and they couldn't airlift him because he'd never survived the airlift. And even if he did, they, he wasn't going to survive the surgery and on and on and on. And I'm like, he's still alive. Right. Um, and so my son had massive traumatic brain injury, um, multiple bleeds. He had 13 fractures. He had this torn aorta. We overruled the doctors and airlifted him and he survived the airlift and survived that surgery. But I literally stood in the hospital after the first 24 hours and you know the first 24 hours you're just in a state of shock literally rachel it was like i was watching a movie because my brain could not compute that this was really happening mm -hmm. so i think your body just goes oh we're just going to put that as a movie so you don't have to really go through so i'm like you know but at the end of that 24 hours after the freak out and everything else i stood there and i went all right what do i need to do here what am i going to do because 
uh, my son and I told Grant, his name means warrior. And I said, Grant, mm -hmm. I need you to fight, sweetheart. Mm -hmm. I, I need you to fight. I'm in a fight. I'm going to pull in all my resources. We've got this. If you stay strong and you're going to be 110%, this will be the best thing that ever happened to you because I, I am so completely obsessed with, with your thoughts create. I would not let anything enter my head. Any like, what ifs? No, no, no. You know, it was just like, stay strong. And then I stood there and I went, what do, what do, who do I need to be? How do I need to show up in order to make sure that I've done everything possible to help my son get to be 110%? Because on the one hand, I knew that I could have peace. I couldn't control like what was going to happen. I could control how I showed up and what mm -hmm. I did. And I knew that in order to do that, I couldn't get sick. You cannot walk into an ICU with a sniffle, like you can't walk in. So here I am. I mean, he's got a tube coming out of his brain. He's got a central line. He's on a ventilator. So no getting sick. I'm, I, I'm gloved. I'm masked. I'm in a gown. And I thought, all right, there's no margin for error here. I need to put my self-care before everything else, before him, before my other child, before my business. And, and here was the interesting thing. I'm a single mom, sole financial support for my kids. I had invested everything into the Virgin Diet, which was coming out in a, like literally that next month. Mm -hmm. If it didn't work, I was going to be bankrupt. I couldn't pay for the hospital bills, you know? So talk about like perfect storm, everything converging on me. And I just went, all right, what, do, what am I going to have to do to pull this one off? And I thought... I have to put my self-care above all else and I cannot get sick. Now, fortunately, I was walking into this in extremely good health mm -hmm. and I just, you know, I kind of SOS'd out to everybody and it was like my friend, Dr. Hyla Cash showed up, Cash showed up. She had made homemade um, organic chicken noodle soup gluten-free. She'd brought me all sorts of stress supplements. So I just was doing everything I needed to getting good sleep, eating correctly, exercising. I was running up and down hotel stairs and hospital stairs and doing everything I needed to do to stay healthy during this time. And so, and the biggest part of it, of course, Rachel was managing my mindset, right? And like extreme mindset management. But I look at the, where we're at right now and it's exactly the same. Yeah, like, it is. It's exactly the same. And as this whole thing started to unfold, I remember at first I felt like I was back at the hospital that first night. I felt that same anxiety, adrenaline, everything else. And I go, oh, I know this, right? Mm -hmm. This is what we need to do. Mm -hmm. And this is how we need to deal with it. And I, and the first thing I thought is I've got to get the information that I never wrote down. Like the book Warrior Mom goes through how I got through that and the mindset things I used and how I was able to show up and not freak out, you know, when my son nearly died multiple times, but, um, and was suicidal, which is the dirty secret they don't tell you about brain injuries is how long they actually take to recover from and how mm -hmm. many people are suicidal because of it. But um, what I never really wrote down was, here's what you do if you don't have any margin for error, if you can't get sick. And hey, you know, realistically, we're probably like the only way you can stay completely safe is to hide out, but that's no life. So what we want to make sure of is that if you are exposed, you're walking in at the highest level of self-care, you are as strong as possible so that you've got your own protective set of armor on, right? And so that's what I finally got. I was like, I have to get this all down in video and training and everything else. So that's the first thing that I did when this thing hit. Besides, uh, luckily my husband's a super prepper, so he got the toilet paper. I got all the supplements and IVs and everything else. And there you go. But um, there is so much you can do, and that's really the most important part. And what's interesting, as I was writing out everything you need to do to have a healthy immune system be able to get through this, so many of the things are are mindset related, right? They're not. It's not like, of course, food matters, supplements matters, matters, but a lot of it is much more of. And to me, the most important thing of all is really what you're thinking matters. And feeling most of all. worthy. Oh yeah. When we That's surveyed our, you, our you community, we, um, a couple of years ago, we did an open-ended survey, a Ryan Levesque ask survey to our community. And we said, if you're not where you want to be with your health and your weight, why not? What's going on? And I fully expected Rachel that they would go, Oh, I can't quit sugar. Right. You know I mean? Or I can't give up with the cheese. Like think of my community, their, their food intolerance, or they've got 
carbon tolerance, sugar issues. So that's what I expected. And that's not what I got. What I got was I'm not where I want to be in my health because I don't feel good enough. I don't feel worth it. I'm not worthy. And I'm like, oh my gosh, you know? And I remember as I was writing the Miracle Mindset Warrior Mom book, the publishers were like, well, what, who are you to write this? You know, I'm like, well, besides being a warrior mom, every program I've ever done before I ever start with the how, I always start with the why. Why now? Why you? Why do you want to do this? What, you know, where, why? You know, you're here now. You want to be there. Why? What's this gap? Like, and why you, why now? Um, and it is so key critical. And I, I know when I was on Dr. Phil, I was on the Dr. Phil show weekly for two years. And he said, as their weight loss nutritionist, he said, I can always tell JJ if someone's going to be successful or not. I'm like, all right, share that one with me. I want to know. Mm -hmm. He goes, it's if they believe they can be successful. It's that simple. If you believe you can do it, but if you don't believe it, and the key word there, and I can tell it every single time, if someone tells me they're going to try, it's like the Yoda thing. Don't try, do. You know, there's no try. Mm -hmm. Right? I'm, it's the no crying in baseball, no trying in weight loss. <laughs> yeah. And I'm just so grateful for your community because there's, there's so many forward-thinking healthcare providers that, that are jumping on this bandwagon with you mm -hmm. and, and our, our community. And having that support network is so key. So I need that for myself so I can show up and, you know, interview health icons like yourself, JJ. And for, for you guys listening where you might feel a bit unworthy to look after yourself, do your self-care, even just, you know, invest in a really good skincare routine and, and start doing some good at home, you know, health things that our, our friend Dave Asprey talks about and, and yourself as well in your books, you are worth it, right? We have to sometimes get out of our way a little bit. Mm -hmm. So I have a question for you, and this came from your dear friend, Lana Asprey. I wanted to ask you, when did you decide to focus on your work and energy on helping others? And what it was that inspired you to make that choice? Um, I'm trying to think of the first time I started doing it because it's just kind of my natural state of being. Mm -hmm. And it's funny, my mom pointed it out to me. It, it just, and I think actually I told a story about this at Mindshare this year where I was talking about what it feels like to belong. And, you know, you talk, I think it's the most open subject line of an email of all time is the subject line, you are not alone. Mm -hmm. We all desperately want to belong. We have this deep need to. This is why it's so scary right now. The scariest part of this pandemic to me is, is the isolation of it because we need to belong. We need to hug. We need to touch. We need the oxytocin. It's, it's a desperate human need. I mean, they've likened social isolation to smoking a half pack of cigarettes a day. So I'm an adopted kid and, um, you know, my parents had to want me more, you know, than, and, but ultimately, even though you're told this, you know, your parents had to want you more to get you blah, blah, blah. The person who's supposed to love you more than anyone on the planet gave you away. And even though you're told that they had to love you more to give you away, the bottom line is they gave you away. And so when I, you know, they talk about adopted kids having what's called a primal wound and, and always kind of like feeling like they could be left alone. And no matter what people tell you, you kind of have that one. It's sort of there, right? And Dave, even like when I went to 40 Years of Zen, because he made me do it, he was like, all right, mm -hmm. let's, address, let's address this. Yeah. Um, and, you know, that's where Lana and Dave are kind of, they are family. And it's when I met Dave, it was like finding long lost family. Mm -hmm. Um. So I think it's always come from this deep-seated need to create a family. And I come from a belief that you can create a family around you. Mindshare is a family I've created around me. And I've done it my whole life. I've always been creating experiences and creating groups and leading groups since the time I was like a little girl. I've done it. And then as I went off to school and I was in various groups and I always ended up leading the groups, 
Then I went and I started becoming a personal trainer because I was teaching aerobics and someone didn't show up and I started teaching and then someone wanted me to come to their house and I started doing teaching aerobics at home and then all of a sudden I'm a personal trainer and there were three and it was a new thing and we didn't even know what to call ourselves. And when I started to do that, then I started teaching other people to do it too. So, I mean, it's always been kind of my natural thing that I'll do is I'll do something. The next step is let's bring other people in and let's share with them. And, 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 you know, I remember when I was um, on a TV show, I started teaching my co-star all the stuff I did and all the producers like, you know, he's just going to like bump you out and take your stuff. And I'm like, there's, you know, there's abundance. So what, you know, it's like, I'm just not going to worry about that stuff. And so I think, Possibly the answer to all of that is really a um, philosophical uh, belief that there is more than enough in the universe for all of us. And that if you have something that you've learned to do, like, and you really want to make a bigger impact in the world, share it. Mm-hmm. Right? Share it. Yeah. I'll never forget at our last Mindshare event, you know, sitting in that room with with all of these newfound friends, it's like literally the first time I've been in the room with how many people were there, JJ? Like 500. I felt like this is my tribe. Yeah, that's what people do. They come and they go, oh, family. Yeah. Right? Yep, that's, and that is, and here's what's interesting when you're creating a group. And um, there's a great book by Radha Agrawal, who created Daybreaker called Belong, that details this. And she so nailed it. And it really is, you know, groups are tribal. We need to belong. We want to be a part of things. It's just this. And so often we have two things we're doing. We're entrepreneurs, which is super lonely. And we're in health, which can be super lonely and very judgy. Like the people I've seen who are the most judgy are some of these, you know, health experts and doctors get very judgy with each other. Same with personal trainers and nutritionists. And, and so, you know, creating a space that's safe where everyone gets along and you teach people, you have ve- a very specific code and constraints. And it's like, okay, we collaborate here, mm-hmm. right? It's safe here. And sometimes Rachel, I have to put people in timeout. You know, we get to have those conversations. It's like, you know, sometimes you have a black sheep, right? You know, that happens in any of these groups to create a safe space. But you create the safe space so that everyone can go up together. I, from the very beginning, and I'd always get the line wrong, and finally people were like, just rise, right? But that whole rising tide lifts all boats is just a, a line I live my life by. Mm-hmm. And I've really been able to see this code of conduct within the Mindshare community. And for me as an aesthetic nurse, it's what I've noticed is that it can be very competitive where, okay, just wait a second, we can all learn from one another. This is fantastic so that we can continue to provide a very high level of care. What you mentioned about you know, giving people in the community the boot if they're black sheep and they're not abiding, I really, um, I'm really grateful for you for being able to have that discernment with people if they're going to be collaborative and kind and things like that. So what is your barometer for assessing kindness in someone? (laughs) I really want you to talk about that. You know, um, your it's own always, kindness as well. It's really tough. It's actually tough in the group. So I will, I always believe, I believe in second chances. Mm-hmm. I, I tend to, I'm going to let you, you have to really prove to me you're not a good person. But I also think that if you reward, you, you get what you reward, right? So you see us do these things where we reward every year. We have awards. We do them in our mastermind too. We have awards for the um, behaviors that we really want to amplify. And hey, in my own life, I work on this all the time. Mary Morrissey, who's a dear close friend, someone I love, love so much. Incredible woman. And um, I was so excited to bring her to Mindshare this year. And because I knew that if people could incorporate her teaching into their medical practices, 
we would change the world. And it's one mm -hmm. of the things I've told her from when I first met her, I'm like, oh my gosh, every healthcare professional needs to understand how to put your work into their practice. Because if someone doesn't believe that they can get better and they're not working on their thinking, they don't have a chance. And one of the things she talks about is noticing what you're noticing. We've got really good barometers. I know when I've done something that I'm not proud of that I wish I could have done better. And the first thing is, you know, also recognizing it, noticing what you're noticing and, and not kicking your own butt forever, just kind of going, yeah, I did that. I could have done it better. And, you know, next time, right? Notice what you're noticing. But also know that I'm glad I have that barometer that will say, hey, that was creepy. Why did you do that? You shouldn't have said that, you know? <laughs> and I, 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 pick, I really work on one thing at a time. I've had to really work on judgment. That's one I'm, I've been working on that I, I feel like I've gotten a lot better on now is, you know, not being judgy, right? And not being critical. Because if you are, generally the first person you're doing that to your, is yourself. Yes. So, yeah. And so a lot of times being nice, just the first person you have to be nice to is yourself. <laughs> you <know? laughs> what has it been like for you to been able to sort of cultivate this community and see the kindness that people that work with you are spreading in the world right now? Isn't it cool? Yeah. What does that feel like for you? I just love you? that so much. Like that makes me ridiculously happy. Like I just was doing a Facebook live with Dr. Anna Kabeka, who I adore. And we've known each other for 20 years. She was actually my first coaching client on the business <laughs> side, like way back when. Like there are people in the Mindshare community who have been with me, you know, we've been together from the start. And, um, you know, we just were doing a live and everybody was jumping on this going, Anna, you know, it was so cute to see the community coming in, supporting her. And that's, mm -hmm. that's what I love. What I love too is watching like when people go through challenges in that community, how other, everyone jumps in to support them and take care of them. So it's just, it's like everything for me, honestly. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of good people in the world and if you're kind of like, oh, hearing, oh, you know, don't do that because of this, blah, 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 you have to do what feels good for you. And I'll never forget when, you know, I first heard your name and started learning about you. And then, and then I met you. I was like, oh my gosh, this woman is really walking the walk and talking the talk. And you wouldn't be able to, you know, look as, as beautiful as you, you are and present yourself in such this, just this beautiful powerful way if you didn't perform your self-care because you know that you're worth it you know it's it's kind of fun as a health expert because you can first before you really believe you're worth it you kind of can fake it because um <laughs> you have to do it for your clients you know so i was one of the things that i've always been super integrous about is i don't ever want to recommend something that I'm not doing myself. Like, mm -hmm. I'm not going to go tell you to intermittent fast and I'm sitting here snacking all day long. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to tell you to dump the gluten and dairy and, and corn and I'm sitting here eating a big sandwich. You know, it's like, so I'm super high integrity. I, one of the things I get asked all the time is like, what do you do to cheat? I'm like, I, I actually really, I don't, you know? So that's one of the things I've always been is like, when people talk about being authentic, I don't even understand what the hell they're talking about. I'm like, just be you. Like, what's the be, like, when did we have to become authentic? Like, what is this garbage about being authentic or being, just be you, right? You know, be you and let people in. That's all. Mm -hmm. The end. There should never be a conversation about being authentic. Like, because to me, I'm highly suspicious when anybody ever tells me they're, they're being authentic. To me, the minute, if you have to say you're being authentic, it would be like me saying, I'm going to be tall today. Mm -hmm. I have you know? an interesting take on authenticity. I feel like we can be our most truest, vibrant, radiant, most beautiful versions of ourselves and how we interact with people, places, and things when we have our body, mind, spirit, and energy in balance right? So everything mm -hmm. you talk about in nutrition, I mean, you're a powerhouse and icon in the world of health, fitness, and nutrition. What do you think about that? 
I totally agree. And then I think there's this other piece that's really interesting. And again, it's the notice what you're noticing is sometimes I find that I'm around some people who do not make me feel like my best self. I just don't mm. feel good around them. And I think mm. there's sometimes a vibration or a resonance and some people just are people you're not meant to be with, you know, it's just not a right fit. Just like when you're hiring people for your company and someone may not be a right fit, doesn't make them a bad person. They're just not right for you. You know, you have to release them on to other things. There's just certain people that I know in my people. It's almost like there's this little like vibration that tells you. But, you know, when you really look at it, if you want to go on and really show up in the world the way we're all meant to do, you can't do that unless you've, you're sleeping well, you're extra, like you can't do it unless you have your body in gear like you your body has to be in line so you can think straight you have great energy right i mean that has to be there so i don't know how you would do it without that mm -hmm. yeah it's kind of funny when people ask us what is your number one health tip or what's what's your yeah. number one beauty tip it's like care well. enough to, to <laughs> get your health first you know it's it's rachel it's changed so much because back 30 something years ago when I started doing all this stuff, anyone that was eating healthy, going to a health food store, um, working with a personal trainer was a health nut. Mm -hmm. A health nut. Like you haven't heard that term probably forever because now it's just just what you do. Like mm -hmm. what do you mean a health nut? Who wouldn't be a health nut? You would never buy a racehorse and then have that racehorse stay out too late you know, hitting the bar, going to Taco Bell after the bar for the fourth meal, getting up super early, going and having a donut and, you know, smoking cigarettes. You'd never do that with a racehorse, right? I'm assuming invest a million dollars in one, but yet you wouldn't probably drive your car to the ground and not put oil and water in it and let it overheat. So, you know, it's like, what's the difference? Why wouldn't we put ourselves, why, why would we take better care of our car than ourselves? And, and I'm hoping that this current climate is going to make that final shift where, you know, I haven't heard about health nuts and people acting like you're a freak because, you know, you asked for something on the side or not to have fried or whatever. But I feel like now, even more than ever, wellness prevention are going to become the new normal. And that is like a huge silver lining. Mm -hmm. What would you say is the one thing in your life, community-wise, specifically, not as a mother entrepreneur, but, but with community that lights you up? Hmm. Um, How do you like to feel? You know, I think the thing that probably lights me up, that lights everybody up, first of all, I'm just, I feel super fortunate to have found the love of my life. I didn't find him until my 50s, <laughs> um, but we were ready. Like I'd gone through, Dave actually prepared me for all of this. Um, but, you know, I think that all of us just want to feel like we belong and that we are in a place with people who are going to love us even through our ugly times, our challenging times. I remember I did this book launch that absolutely failed and everybody supported me and everybody like who thought they were going to do be successful along with me, the whole thing blew up. And I sent an email out and I said, guys, this like completely failed. And I'm so sorry. I know you sent emails and you supported me. And Dave was one of the first people and he goes, that's not why we did it did it because we love you. We yeah. support you. And so that's, that's the thing that's important. That at the end of the day is having those friends that you know, like, you know, I mean, that I, that's every year New Year's Eve is my closest friends. We have, we have a group of us that travel all over together. And it's just, you know, that's, that is my most, my biggest treasure is my, are my family and close friends. Mm -hmm. And to be very discerning of who those people are so that you protect yourself and your energy and you can still live in a way that facilitates your body, mind, spirit, energy. It's, we have to really stick up for ourselves in that regard. Someone asked me, I was on a uh, summit and they go, what's your one tip, your one health tip? And I said, my one health tip is find healthier friends. <laughs> 
And they're like, that is like, no one said this before, yeah. you know? But Jim Rohn talks about this, that your, your income is the average of the five people you hang out with. And I'm like, well, what about if it's a little bit more than your income? It's your mindset. It's your health. Mm. It's your, like everything. You are who you choose to be with, like, because you're choosing your friends. And I would say you can choose your family too. So look who you're choosing to be around. Choose positive people. Choose people who are making a difference in the world. Choose people who have your back, who will defend you. Choose those people. And right? you dive into this in your book, Warrior Mom and Miracle Mindset. And you have so many great exercises that people can do in there as well. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, JJ. You're such an inspiration to me. I'm, I'm so grateful for you, the work that you do, and the fact that you've allowed me to find my tribe. Yay, I'm glad you're, I'm glad you're with us. Yeah. Welcome to the family. Wonderful. And you have a fantastic podcast called the Reignite Wellness Podcast. So you can hang out with JJ there and also at www.jjvirgin.com. Do you have any final words? Um, the final words, yeah. I'm going to reiterate what I just said. If you want to change your life, one of the easiest ways that you can do it, besides uh, really focusing on what you're thinking and, and noticing what you're noticing, is start to like really make sure the people you're around help you be the best version of yourself. I love it. What a great way to conclude this episode on the Rachel Vargo podcast. Thank you very much for the work that you do, JJ. Thank you.